So if you were to think of sound as something that travels in the air and reaches your ears, you're right. Now we're going to go into it deeply and ask the question, what exactly is sound? So let's begin. Let's take our guitar and let's pluck one of the strings and observe what happens here. What do you observe? What looks like that? What looks like a real, really fast oscillation? If you were to slow things down, right? Look at what you see. You begin to observe that the string goes outwards and reaches a maximum point. And when it does that, what does it do? There is air all around it. This little string here in this case goes that way, begins to press air together. In other words, there is a higher density of air in that little pocket next to the string, as you can see. Now, what do you observe? There's high pressure there, right? From your understanding of pressure from the previous chapters, you know that there's a higher pressure there. Now, what happens to the string immediately? The string is going to come back, right? When it does that, what is, what is it really doing? It's kind of pulling the air behind it, which means that there is, it's pushed some air and it's come back now, which means that in this gap, there's going to be less air, which is low pressure. So in one up and down, what the string has really done is that it's compressed some air and it's brought back and it's kept a little bit of air less for some time. So high pressure, low pressure. Now, what is the string going to do again? It's going to create this again. But even if it does not do that, this high pressure area, in other words, air pushed that way, what is it going to do? It's going to try and push the air on the other side of it even more, right? So this compression is going to push it a little bit more on that side and that's going to push it more on the other side. And this, in other words, the compression is going to travel along with the rarefaction following it, right? In other words, you push some air that all these balls of air go and hit each other, become closely packed. They hit the next areas, they hit the next areas and so on, as you can see. So in other words, what begins to happen is that this compression, it's, like, it's almost like tuck, tuck, tuck. It starts moving through the air. I'm showing it to you in one line, but you know that's happening as a circle all around because air starts moving in every possible direction. It starts getting compressed and rarefacted in all possible directions. So there's one compression and one rarefaction traveling in all possible directions. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to take the string of the guitar, visualize the air parallelly with the slinky as it compresses and gets pulled back and see the both as a graph and watch what we observe. So this, the string of the guitar moves upwards, compresses air that's equal to somebody pushing the slinky, pushing it that way and that's equal to somebody creating a pressure up in the air and that's going to be represented with, an, with a little peak in the graph as you can see. So the pressure peaks now and what are you, what are you going to, and it peaks slowly so therefore, therefore the graph is going to go that way, it's going to reach a peak. And now the string of the guitar is going to get pulled back. In other words, there's a pressure drop. And in this way, the slinky is going to get pulled back again. So the pressure has moved, the, the, the compression of the slinky has gone a little forward and the spring has gone a little forward, but the back is a little more elongated. And that in the graph is represented as a down, yeah? So a trough, a crest and a trough. So what have we really shown here? There's a pressure up and a pressure down. And these are, that's the way of visualizing it. And this is the way in which you will draw it as a graph. Now what is going to happen now is it's going to repeat again. So you're going to get the string to move forward again. So one more compression, one more up. So you will let this run through time and that's what you'll observe, right? The string compressing and rarefacting the air, compressing, pushing it back, compressing, pushing it back. So on with the slinky and slow on with the graph. And that's the graph is a good way to visualize this. Rather a very, very convenient way to visualize what's happening for us. And you can also begin to observe that the graph is actually more suitable, more intuitive for a transverse wave, right? Because that's exactly how, if you had set up a wave in a string, that's exactly how it would have looked, right? In this case, it happens to be what we are observing happen to be what kind of waves? That's right, longitudinal waves, because the particles of air are pushing and they are compressing that way. So each particle of air, what is it really doing? It's just moving away from its position and coming back and it's oscillating back and forth about its position. This way and the sound itself is moving in the same direction. Therefore, it's a longitudinal wave. So longitudinal waves are usually a little difficult to visualize. Therefore, the graph actually gives you more of a transverse representation of it. Because if you had taken a string and done that, that's the graph is how it would have looked. But in this case, that represents the sound and the slinky, both of which are longitudinal waves. If you like this video, and if you want to watch more videos like these, hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy learning this way, download Baiju's, the all new and personalized learning app.